tonight what you're going to see is the culmination of projects that um, our directors did. So they learned about being directors. We gathered some actors for them to direct um, short scenes for you. And here's another actor. Yay, welcome to Yay! <laughs> And so um, they are going to give you a little brief synopsis about the vision for their little show. And then they're going to give you a scene by two actors uh, or three actors, in which case, um, that they have directed their actors in for the first time. Yay! Um, but then they will receive certificates from me, and then there will be cake. And, and, a, because I'm sick, and B, because I have already cut myself, somebody else will cut cake. <laughs> um, um, but again, thank you for being here. This was our first directing class that we have done. Um, I'll send out evaluations for you guys later so you can tell me what you thought of the class. Um, I have brought um, some forms for anybody else that would like to sign up for the next class, which will start not next week, but the following week. Hopefully by then I will no longer be sick and then we'll have lots more fun. Yay! <laughs> um, but it's good for everybody. As you can see, we had directors of all ages. Um, and <laughs> the young one. <laughs> the most wonderful one. Don't worry. Oh, and before um, we start, did anybody have any questions about what you're going to see? Are you totally confused, audience? Everybody's good. Pretty good. This isn't Zaro. This is In Sherlock as Dr. Watson, who will be playing a much smarter character. Oh, we hope. Oh, does this look like a Zorro set piece? It could be. Um, meanwhile, you can also come and see um, We Rich Theater Company in the Pride Parade and also at Sandy in the Fringe Festival. That's going to be a lot of fun. Do not bring your children. Please, for the love, do not bring your children to Sandy. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, um, we are going to start with Mike, whose last name I will continue to mispronounce for as long as I live. Kinker? That's right. I did it right. Oh, There, he is not going to stand this far back because he does not have a cold. Um, <laughs> and he's going to stand there and give us a brief introduction of the, the show that he has directed for us. It's just, a, they're all short shows. We're not here for two hours. And he's going to tell you about it and introduce his cast. Go, Mike! Hi, I'm Mike Kinker. And the short play I'm going to be directing tonight is Sure Thing by David Ives. And I'm sorry I didn't memorize this, so. <laughs> um, this play is a lighthearted, and humorous look at dating and starting relationships and the inevitable failures and learning experiences. I think we can all find elements in this play that we can relate to. Now the setting obviously is a simple cafe where the wait staff is not just neglectful but seems to be entirely absent, as you will find. Costumes are contemporary casual dress for a night out or first date scenario. Um, the lighting is dim, but we, we would have spotlights on our actor's table. Uh, the background sound might be some soft instrumental music you might find in a cafe. Um, I did think about adding background voices, you know, like like buzz of, of people talking, but um, given that you can't get weighted on in this restaurant who would come to eat here. So, so obviously, obviously, as Betty will tell you, it's a great place for reading. Um, the props, as you see, simple cafe table setting. Uh, notice the half-filled sugar and peppercorn dispensers. Totally empty Parmesan dispenser. and. Where's the salt shake? <laughs> it's completely <laughs> gone. And then you've got a cheap little electronic candle light that, you know, obviously shows that the staff and the management just, they simply don't care. <laughs> oh, and one last thing, there is a bell <laughs> in this play. My actors are the lovely Lauren Russell and Brian Sanchez. <laughs> <laughs> playing Betty and Bill. 
Thank you both for Thank doing you. this for me. Uh, here's a summary. Sure Thing is a short comic play by American playwright David Ives, first produced in 1988 and published in 1993. Taking place over 10 minutes, it focuses on the chance meeting of two characters, Betty and Bill, who have their conversation constantly interrupted and reset by the use of a ringing bell that rings every time one of them responds negatively to something the other says. Dealing with themes of sexism, inner life, and thoughts, and the role of fate and chance in what relationships influence our lives, Sure Thing debuted at Manhattan Punchlines Festival of One Act Comedies and was included in Ives' collection of short plays, All in the Timing, which premiered off-Broadway in 1993 and was revived at primary stages in 2013. The anthology won Ives the Outer Critics Circle John Gassner Award for playwriting. Sure Thing is a popular showcase for actors in acting classes. I myself performed this uh, little play when I was in an acting class in 2003 at the Aurora Community College. And I'll never forget that. I obviously played Bill, but it's <laughs> probably a given. Anyway, I present now Sure Thing. Excuse me, is this a uh, chair taken? Yes, it is. Oh, sorry. Sure thing. <sighs> Excuse me, is this chair taken? No, but I'm expecting somebody very shortly. Would you mind if I sit here till he or she or it gets here? They do seem to be pretty late. You never know, you might be turned down. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> nice try, though. Sure thing. Is this seat taken? No, it's not. Would you mind if I sit here? Yes, I would. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Is this chair taken? No, it's not. Would you mind if I sit here? No, go ahead. Thanks. <sighs> Every place else seems to be taken. Mm-hmm. Great place. Mm-hmm. What's the book? I just want to read in quiet if you don't mind. No, sure thing. <laughs> Every place else seems to be taken. Mm-hmm. Great place for reading. Yes, I like it. What's the book? The Sound and the Fury. Oh, Hemingway. What's the book? The Sound and the Fury. Oh, Faulkner. Have you read it? <laughs> Not actually. I've sure read about it though. It's supposed to be great. It is great. I hear it's great. <sighs> Waiter. <laughs> What's the book? The Sound and the Fury. Oh, Faulkner. Have you read it? Yeah, I read it in college. Where was college? I went to Oral Roberts University. <laughs> <laughs> Where was college? I was lying. I never really went to college. I just like to party. <laughs> Where was college? Harvard. <coughs> oh. Do you like Faulkner? I love Faulkner. I spent a whole winter reading him once. I just started. I was so excited after 10 pages that I went out and brought everything else he wrote. <sighs> One of the greatest reading experiences of my life. I mean, all that psychological understanding, page after page of gorgeous prose. This profound grasp of mystery and time of human existence. The smells of the earth. What do you think? I think it's pretty boring. <laughs> <laughs> What's the book? The Sound and the Fury. Oh, Faulkner. Do you like Faulkner? I love Faulkner. Uh, he's incredible. I spent a whole winter reading him once. I was so excited after 10 pages that I went out and bought everything else he wrote. All that incredible psychological understanding. And the prose is so gorgeous. And the way he grasped the mystery of time. And human existence. I can't believe I waited this long to read him. You never know. You might not have liked him before. That's true. You might not have been ready for him. You have to hit these things at the right moment or it's no good. That's happened to me. It's all in the timing. My name's Bill, by the way. I'm Betty. Hi. Hi. <laughs> yes, I thought reading Faulkner was a great experience. Yes. But the Sound of the Fury. Well, onwards and upwards. <laughs> Waiter. <laughs> My name's Bill, by the way. I'm Betty. Hi. Hi. Do you come in here a lot? 
Actually, I'm just in town for two days from Pakistan. Oh, Pakistan. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Bill, by the way. I'm Betty. Hi. Hi. Do you come in here a lot? Every once in a while. Do you? Not so much anymore. Not as much as I used to before my nervous breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> Do you come in here a lot? Why are you asking? Just in interested. Are you really interested, or do you just want to pick me up? Mm, no, I'm really interested. Why would you be interested in whether I come here a lot? I'm, I'm just getting acquainted. Maybe you're only interested for the sake of making small talk long enough to ask me back to your place to listen to some music, or because you just rented a tape for your VCR, or you've got some terrific unknown Django Reinhardt record, only all you really want to do is fuck. <laughs> Which you won't do very well. <laughs> After which, you'll go to the bathroom and pee very loudly, and then pad into the kitchen and get yourself a beer from the refrigerator without asking me if I like anything, and then you'll proceed to lie back down beside me and confess that you've got a girlfriend named Stephanie who's away in medical school in Belgium for a year who you've been involved with, off and on, in what you would call a very intricate relationship for the past seven years! None of which interests me, mister! Okay. <laughs> Do you come in here a lot? Every other day, I think. I come in here quite a lot, and I don't remember seeing you. We must be on different schedules. Misconnections. Yes, different time zones. Amazing how you could live right next door to somebody in this town and never even know it. I know. City life. It's crazy. We probably pass each other every day in the street. Right in the front of this place, probably. Yep. Well, the, the waiters sure seem to be in a different time zone, <laughs> but I can't seem to locate one anywhere. Waiter! So what do you... I beg pardon? Nothing. Sorry. Amazing how you can live right next door to somebody in this town and never even know it. I know. City life. It's crazy. You were waiting for somebody when I came in, were you? Actually, I was. Oh, boyfriend. Sort of. What's a sort of boyfriend? My husband. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> you were waiting for somebody when I came in, were you? Actually, I was. Oh, boyfriend. Sort of. What's a sort of boyfriend? We were meeting here to break up. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> What's a sort of boyfriend? My lover. Oh, here she comes right now. <laughs> you were waiting for somebody when I came in, were you? No, just reading. Sort of a sad occupation for a Friday night, isn't it? Reading here all by yourself. Do you think so? Oh, sure. I mean, what's a good looking woman like you doing here alone on a Friday night? Trying to keep away from lines like that. <laughs> no, wait. <laughs> you were waiting for somebody when I came in, were you? No, just reading. Sort of a sad occupation for a Friday night, isn't it? Reading here all by yourself? Uh, I guess it is, in a way. What's a good looking woman like you doing not alone on a Friday night anyway? No offense, but... I'm not alone on a Friday night for the first time in a very long time. Oh. Uh, you see, I recently ended a relationship. Oh. Of rather long standing. I'm sorry. Well... Listen, since reading by yourself is such a sad occupation for a Friday night, would you like to go elsewhere? No. Do something else? <laughs> no thanks. I was heading out to the movies in a little while anyway. I don't think so. The big chance to let Faulkner catch his breath. All those long sentences get him pretty tired. Thanks anyway. Okay. I appreciate the invitation. Sure thing. You were waiting for somebody when I came in, were you? No, just reading. Sort of a sad occupation for a Friday night, isn't it? <clears throat> reading here all by yourself. I guess I was trying to think of it as existentially romantic. You know, cappuccino, great literature, rainy nights. That only works in Paris. We could hop on a late plane to Paris, get on the Concorde, find a cafe. <laughs> I'm a little short on play pay plane fare tonight. <laughs> Darn it. So am I. <laughs> To tell you the truth, I was headed to the movies after I finished this section. Would you like to come along? That's a very nice offer, but... 
girlfriend? Uh, two, actually. One of them is pregnant, and Stephanie. <laughs> Yeah. No, I don't have a girlfriend. Not if you mean that castrating bitch I dumped last night. Yeah. <laughs> girlfriend? Sort of. Sort of. What's a sort of girlfriend? My mother? <laughs> <laughs> I just ended a relationship, actually. Uh, oh. Of rather long standing. I'm sorry to hear it. This is my first night alone in a long time. I feel a little bit at sea to tell you the truth. So you didn't stop to talk because you're a Mooney or you have some weird political affiliation? Nope! Straight down the ticket Republican. <laughs> Straight down the ticket Democrat. <laughs> Can I tell you something about politics? <laughs> I like to think of myself as a citizen of the universe. I'm unaffiliated. <laughs> so am I. Labels are not important exactly. Take me, for example. I mean, what does it matter if I had a 2.0, 3.0, Four point at college, or if I did come from Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Rochester County, I believe that a man is what he is. A person is what he is. A person is what they are. I think so too. So what if I admire Trotsky? So what if I have total body libel section? So what if I don't have a penis? <laughs> so what if I spent a year in Peace Corps? I was acting on my convictions. Sure. You can't just hang a sign on a person. Absolutely. I bet you're a Scorpio. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, I was headed to the movies after I finished this section. Would you like to come along? That sounds like fun. What's playing? A couple of really early Woody Allen movies. Oh. You don't like Woody Allen? <laughs> sure, I like Woody Allen. But you're not crazy about Woody Allen. Those early ones kind of get on my nerves. Uh-huh. So I was heading out to the... I'm sorry. Uh, no, go ahead. I was going to say I was heading out to the movies in a little while and maybe... So was I. The Woody Allen Festival? Just up the street. Uh, so... Uh, uh, you, do you like the early ones? I think anyone who doesn't ought to be run off the planet. How many times have you seen Bananas? Eight. Twelve. So are you still interested? Do you like Animate's Crumb Cake? Last night, I went out two in the morning to get one. Did you have a Zetra sketch as a child? Yes! And do you like Brussels sprouts? No. I think they're disgusting. They are disgusting! Do you believe in marriage in spite of current sentiments against it? Yes! And children? Three of them. Two girls and a boy. Harvard, Vassar, and Brown. And will you love me? Uh, yes! And cherish me forever? Yes! So do you still want to go to the movies? Sure thing. Later! Later. Uh story sort of rendition and as you can see I'm a big fan and even my hat has Buddy Holly on it so I've loved him for a while and um, some little things that uh, weren't in the actual Buddy Holly story I wanted to implement so uh, I made them myself um, there's three scenes but they're all pretty short um, not an hour long or anything. So, I don't know what else. Oh, uh, so the first scene is in the Ed Sullivan show, um, just backstage. And then the second scene is in Buddy Holly and Maria Elena's apartment. Maria Elena was his wife. And then the third scene is in a diner with Jerry Allison, um, Buddy Holly, and Maria Elena. And introduce your actors. Sina, uh, Alan, and who's it? I don't know their last names. <laughs> Is that Austin Butler? <laughs> Perfect. Hey, Elvis. Come here for a second. What's uh, going on? It's about that song you're planning on playing? It won't work. Choose another. Wait, what? What about it? It's too raucous and it's too suggestive. It's not going to work. Ed? 
have some respect. Call me Mr. Sullivan, please. <laughs> Ed, I've already told my friends back at home that I played for them. Buddy, change it. It won't work. It's not going to happen. Sullivan, please. It's one song, the other one won't be as bad. Right. What? If you won't change it, I'm cutting you from the other. Why? Well, if you cut the other, I'm keeping old boy on. Fine, fine. <laughs> By the way, where are the others? I don't know. No telling. Well, I guess. Well, I guess the crickets are not too interested in being on the Ed Sullivan shoe. Ah, <laughs> they're damn more excited than I. Maria, do you mind if I record some songs for a bit? Of course not, Fuddy. You, you do what you have to do. You know I love listening to your voice. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do my chores. There's not much more I can do with the snow outside. So, what are you gonna play? Hmm, some little things I wrote and some songs I've been wanting to play. You know, maybe like Love is Strange, maybe. Oh yeah, that's nice, pretty. Hmm, I thought so. Also, uh, do you know how to use the tape recorder? Yes, I got it myself. Of course, I know how to use it. Well, be careful, it might break easily. Hmm, you sure? I think it's durable. Hmm. Well, <laughs> it's worth a pretty penny, so I expect it to work well. And it is large, huh? And it's probably a great one. Yeah, well, we should test it out anyway. You got enough tape? Lots. <laughs> this holds a lot of tape. Good. We have to test it out then, buddy. You know, do it right. <sighs> All right. I guess that'll work. Do Let me see how to turn it on. Do you know how? Of course I know how, Maria. <laughs> Here, let me. Hello, hello. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez. <laughs> ah, isn't this nice, Maria? Mm, thank you for inviting me. You know, my aunt, she thinks all musicians are crazy. I sure think they are. <laughs> huh, no, we're not crazy, Jerry. We're musicians. <laughs> my, I usually follow my dreams, and Maria here helps. Oh, I like working with musicians sometimes. My aunt, she hates them, but you, they're not so bad. Ah, thanks. <laughs> Yeah, with everyone acting like we're little devils for playing rock and roll, it's nice hearing someone say a good thing or two. Oh, sure. It must be awful having everyone against you all the time. Well, clearly not everyone is against us. You being the nicest. And you know what, Maria? I think I might as well love you. Buddy! This isn't a date. Is uh, it? I sure hope it's not. It might as well be. Murray and Elena, I knew for a while now, these five hours that I've known you, that, <laughs> that you're special. Here we go. Maria, I love you. Will you marry me? Oh, buddy. Are you sure? We only known each other these five hours. <laughs> Didn't I see you get that rose from a waitress? I don't care what happened or happens, but I know that you're meant to be with me. Hmm. Well, what should I say? Well, you could say yes. But it's not that easy. 
unlike what your song says. Um, well, I'll tell you what. I'll ask your aunt if we can get married. That would be good, right? <laughs> My aunt was right. You musicians are crazy. Hey, I'm saying at least. Yeah. Oh, you're fine, Jerry, but you look crazy when you're on those drums. Why, thank you. <laughs> Come on, Maria. You'll be fine. We're both young. We'll be a great couple. Mm -hmm. We can move into a little apartment on our own, recording and producing together. Okay. <sighs> I'll think about it. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> Hold on, crazy! Maybe we could go talk to my aunt, and I do love you. Well, that's good. So, Maria Elena, you don't like musicians? Oh, I like musicians fine. It's my aunt who hates them. Right. So, how are you going to explain him to her? Who knows? Maybe this crazy can convince her. Yep, I'll show her. And now. Do you know what to say? Yes! It's so easy to call <laughs> <laughs>